Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Takemasa, for this uh, invitation. Uh, it's my first time in, in Japan, and I really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> so I, have the, I will have the chance to, to be here in, in June and July for a, a research visit here. So I hope we, we will work on this topic, try to estimate uh, error covariances in, in data simulation. So <clears throat> uh, for those who do not know very well what is data simulation, I've, I've tried to, to put some, uh, uh, some basic uh, comments about it and uh, uh, try to explain uh, quickly what is uh, the problem here, which is really related to uncertainty quantification. And I'm very happy to present that because uh, uh, it's an ongoing work with, uh, with uh, Takemasa and other colleagues. Uh, so uh, basically my colleagues are from, uh, from France, uh, also from Norway, uh, UK, uh, Argentina, and also uh, Ibrahim. Every, Ibrahim is everywhere. <laughs> in all the presentation. Uh, so I would like to thank them for this uh, collaboration. Um, it's uh, basically this, this talk is, is kind of a, 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 a review of uh, different methods to, to estimate errors in data assimilation. So ju just before starting, I also would like to, to introduce myself and where I'm coming from. Uh, so I'm coming from a, a new school uh, IMT, so it's not MIT, it's IMT, <laughs> unfortunately, and uh, it's it's a, a school of mines and, and telecom uh, in France. So for now, it's it's uh, it's one of the best uh, engineering school uh, in France. So maybe you know that in France we have university and and uh, engineering school. And, uh, but the program is is uh, quite the same. And uh, <clears throat> the topic. Uh, the main topic of my uh, new school is uh, is about um, environmental data and also about uh, numerical aspects. So I think data simulation is is a very nice uh, nice uh, bridge between uh, numerical aspects and environmental data. So thank you for the the collaborators. Um, okay. So before starting, I also would like to introduce uh, for the mathemat mathematician here uh, what is uh, the, the data assimilation problem in terms of uh, of maths. Uh, so basically, it's a it's a nonlinear state space model, and uh, we use most of the time we use this uh, uh, <clears throat> this uh, particular state space model. Um, uh, so you have two equations. So um, so what we want to estimate is uh, x. Uh, here I use the official notation in data simulation. So, um, so uh, I use the x for the hidden state, what we want to estimate, what, uh, what is hidden. And uh, so we have this first equation, um, which gives a relationship between the state of the system uh, between time t and time t uh, minus 1, basically. So here, uh, most of the time, we use a, a physical uh, dynamic model, uh, M, but it can be also a, a statistical uh, model or reduced model. Um, so this is the first equation. And the second equation is, is uh, concerning the observation. So basically, uh, most of the time, observation Y are uh, uh, satellite images. Uh, it can be also in situ measurements in, in data simulation. And uh, you have a, a transformation H from the, the state space to the observation space. So here we will assume that this transformation is, is linear to simplify uh, uh, the talk. So, um, so these are the two equations. So basically data simulation is trying to, uh, to mix these two information, to mix the information of the model and of the observation. And what is very important is uh, these terms, uh, these error terms. Um, so basically uh, in most of the cases in data simulation, we are using uh, additive and Gaussian uh, errors like this. 
So this is very convenient uh, because you because um, you can apply the, the Kalman equation and so on. And uh, you have to remember that in data simulation, the state of the system is very huge. So uh, this is a very um, very common um, assumption for the errors. So basically, the, these errors are supposed to be uh, unbiased, and uh, they, we note uh, the covariance of this error Q and R. So these are the the official uh, notation, I will say, uh, of data simulation. So don't don't forget this. Uh, Q is the error of the of the model, and R is the error of the of the observation. So it's just to to plan uh, what we we will do. And the, the, so the goal of this talk is to try to to see if there are uh, different methods to estimate uh, Q and R. So this is very important in practice in, in data simulation. So, um, <clears throat> so as I said, uh, this presentation and this work is a, a review on uh, what have been done in data simulation about this estimation of, of, of these covariances. And um, I think that uh, from the, the 90s in the data simulation community, there are like uh, more than four, 50 papers. I read uh, 50 papers uh, dealing about this uh, this point. And uh, for me, it was a, a little bit uh, uh, messy, uh, all, the, all the literature on, on that. So that's why I decided to, to put clearly uh, what is the different methods and uh, what are exactly using uh, people uh, to, do, to do that. So, uh, and also, I would like also to, to make the link with the signal processing and statistical community, because uh, in data simulation, most, most of the time, uh, people are trying to estimate the errors, and uh, they are most of the time uh, uh, people from physics. So, uh, and I think there is a, uh, we have lots, a lot of things to know about these uh, two communities, statistical and, and signal processing. So basically, I found out uh, four uh, main uh, methods to, to, to estimate Q and R. Uh, the two first ones are based on, on innovation. I will explain what is uh, innovation in, in data simulation. And uh, two other ones are related to uh, likelihood uh, uh, estimation. So basically, uh, here I, I put uh, some, uh, some timeline of, of the, the different methods used in, in data simulation. So the first one, uh, I think the most famous one, I will explain that uh, later, is, is given by Desrosiers, uh, a French uh, uh, guy uh, from uh, Météo France. Um, he, he, so he was the first really to, to try to estimate both uh, Q and R matrices. And then uh, I think an important paper is, uh, is given by uh, Takemasa. So uh, I think for me it's one of the, of the best papers for this um, uh, for these uh, specific methods. So I will explain this uh, quickly later. And uh, you have also different methods based on lag innovation. I will talk about this. Uh, a, a nice article is given by Barry and, and Sauer um, uh, so, uh, five years ago. And then we have some uh, likelihood approach. So uh, you have seen here that uh, we can use Bayesian approaches try to, to try to estimate Q and R. It is, uh, in statistics, it's what the people are, are basically doing. But in practice, in data simulation, it's quite difficult to, to, uh, uh, to get good results with these techniques. I, I will come back to this. So there are some people uh, who, who work on it and uh, publish uh, in, in data simulation. And the last one is based on uh, a classical, uh, also classical in, in statistics. It's based on the maximization of the, of the total likelihood. So I will, I will explain that. Uh, I think the, the first one who, who used uh, this technique in data simulation is a Japanese one. So Genta Ueno is, is uh, uh, recognized. Uh, to use uh, is very involved in, in this technique and also I am also involved in, in this technique uh, we published with uh, uh, Denis Dreano and uh, Ibrahim Otait uh, an article on, on, on this so uh, I will explain uh, this technique also later 
So as I said, this is a kind of, this presentation is kind of review of these different uh, approaches. So I will explain that. Uh, so before starting, I would like just to, to, to show you a very simple example to show you the, the impact of uh, Q and R in, in, in data simulation. So if you have to remember something of my talk, I think this, this is uh, the most uh, important. So be careful. Uh, uh, about this. Uh, the people who are doing data simulation, I think they know uh, the importance of QNR. And for those who don't know, it's important to, to follow this uh, three slide. So basically, uh, here I use uh, a very simple problem. So I, I am uh, in a univariate uh, problem. And I use a very simple autoregressive uh, uh, process uh, for the dynamics of the, uh, of the state. Okay, so it's very simple in, in the uh, dynamic equation. And also I use a, a very simple uh, uh, observation equation. So I suppose that H is, uh, is, uh, is one here. And I generate observation and true state uh, using uh, different uh, Q and R. Uh, so I use a Q true, so that's why I use a T. It's not transpose, it's true and, and RT the true is, is one also. So this is the simulation, okay? So we have the, the true state in red. So this is the goal, uh, what we want to, to estimate. And uh, the points are the noisy observation. So in practice, you have only the noisy observation and you want to retrieve uh, the, 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 the state of the system in, in red. So uh, in this problem, it's very simple because everything is linear and Gaussian. So you can apply directly the, the Kalman equation. And the, the best solution is given by the Kalman smoother. So it's, we are filtering forward and going backward. And we have the best estimate of the state of the system. So in this case, when I use Kalman smoother, with the good Q and R, so here is a, is a result with the, Q, uh, the good Q and R, you see that uh, the mean of the, the reconstructed mean is very close to the, to the true one. So the true is a red. So we have a, a nice reconstruction. So okay, the RMSC is quite good. And uh, what is important also, and very related to uncertainty quantification, is that uh, here I also plot the confidence interval. So this is a 95% confidence interval. And you can see that uh, if you look at carefully, and here I compute uh, these things, the number of red points inside this 95 confidence interval is 95%. So we are uh, in, in the same uh, hypothesis. So this is very important. I will come back to, to that uh, later. So this is the, the best solution given by the, the Kalman smoother with the good, uh, the good Q and R. So then let's try a, a simple example where I, I, I use different, uh, different value of Q. So here I reduce, I do my, my Kalman smoother. Uh, using um, uh, underscale uh, Q uh, variance. And here, in this case, I use, uh, I divide by 10 also the, the error observation. So what's happened when we are doing filtering and smoothing in this case? So in this case, uh, the error of the model is very low. So basically, we, we have a lot of confidence in our uh, autoregressive process. So basically, it's like we have a, a close to a deterministic uh, equation here. So uh, what's happened is that we have very uh, something very smooth, okay, and we don't use really the observation to update uh, uh, our our system. So this is a problem because you have uh, uh, you have not the good uh, RMSC, and uh, and in this case I reduce R. So basically uh, now uh, the observation is very close to to the state of the system. And you can see that uh, in this case, we are overfitting uh, the problem. So basically, uh, the result of my smoother is basically the, the observation. So I am doing like a kind of uh, 
uh, interpolation, linear interpolation of my observation. So this is not good also. And you see the, the impact of the RMSE. So in these two cases, uh, there is a bad um, uh, QNR uh, ratio, okay? You see that uh, the ratio here is not one. The good ratio is one between Q and R, and you have two bad uh, ratio. And you have an impact on the state reconstruction. 